Let's learn about the convolution sum of a linear time invariant system and also take a look at a numerical example. To begin with, an LTI system, that's an abbreviation for linear time invariant system, can be represented by this box. The system has an input x of n, an output y of n, and all of the system behavior is captured in its impulse response h of n. Now the impulse response is the system's response to a specific input called an impulse function, denoted as delta of n. It's zero for all values except for n equals zero, at which time it's a unit value. The system responds with some sort of behavior on the output. So this single impulse triggers a series of, um, you could think of them as impulses as well. If we shift the impulse, in this case delaying it by a value of 2, which would turn that into delta of n minus 2, provided the system is time invariant, or shift invariant is another way of thinking about that, the impulse response simply slides over by the same amount. So we would say that the output then is h of n minus 2. Now let's think about a generic input x of n. I'll draw a, a typical sequence. Here at n equals 0, we would have the value x of 0. And for example, here at n equals 5, we would have the value x of 5. Back here at n is minus 4, we would have x of minus 4. Now the interesting thing here is that I can multiply each one of these by an appropriately shifted delta function. In this case, I would have it delayed by five values. This would be n minus five. Here we would have the delta function advanced. This would be n plus four. Now the reason this is interesting is because we see that this scaled delta function passing through the system produces a scaled impulse response. X of zero is multiplying what we would have got from just delta of n. To match the picture, I've shown the values getting smaller. So this is x of 0 times h of n. Now, this particular scaled impulse would trigger something that looks a little bit larger. So I'm picturing the sum of two shifted and scaled impulse responses. Now, in general, we recognize that there would have been activity prior to this point. Then we would have the specific value that I've indicated here. Have some intermediate values. Here we have the behavior at n equals 0. A few more intermediate values. And finally we have this one. Plus then we'd have whatever ever activity we have after that point. Now the output y of n. Again, we'd have some behavior before this. But the output would look like the scaled version, x of minus 4. And then we would have the response due to that delta function placed at n equals minus 4. And that would be h of n plus 4. And then in a similar way, we have the scaled value with the impulse response with no shift. And then finally, the scaled value with a delay of 5. We can generalize this as saying y of n is the sum from k equals minus infinity to plus infinity. So that would account for all of the values that I've shown plus the extensions on either side. We'd write this as x of k times h of n. So we look at the behaviors here, we see x of n plus 4 there's x of n plus 0, x of n minus 5. So in general, it looks like h of n minus k. And this is the convolution sum. Very important result. It's the sum of scaled and shifted impulse responses. Here's the scaling. And of course, here's the sum.
convolution can be abbreviated with this notation. We write y of n equals x of n convolved with h of n. The asterisk is our convolution operator. Also, it's interesting to note that you can interchange the scaling and shifting operations. I can take this sum and simply rotate out h and x. Generally, we use whichever form is more convenient for computation. All right, let's see how this plays out with an example. Here's my convolution sum for reference purposes. Let me write down x of n equals a particular sequence. I'm placing an underline to indicate the n equals zero value. Here's another sequence for my impulse response, and I'll place its n equals zero value in the center. We want to find y of n is the convolution of x and h. I'll begin by writing h of n sequence like this. I'll strip off the braces and the commas for this part, and also indicate the n equals zero value. I'll do the same thing with x, taking care to place the zero value in the same column as the value for h. Now to apply the scaling operation, let's multiply these together. Here we would have four times one, and I'll place four over here. Here we have eight and negative four. Now what I've just calculated here is the value x of zero times h of n. This is my h of n sequence. We see, looking back at the generic uh, statement here, that k is equal to zero for this case. All right, let's move on to the next value. This is where we are scaling the impulse response by x of one. I would have one, two, and minus one. And this is x of one times the delayed version of h, h of n minus one. Notice the stagger of the two rows here. And again, that's representing the shift operation. All right, we've got a couple more to go. This would be two, four, and minus two. And then we would have five, 10, and minus five. Now the convolution sum says we take our scaled and shifted impulse responses and add them together. So I'll add up column wise here. And the n equals zero location is the same column, so that would be right here at uh, value nine. I'll take those results and rewrite that in, in the sequence notation. And that would be the finished result for convolving x and h. It's also interesting to know to check your work here that the length of y, if I count specifically, and compare those to the counts for x and h, we find that the length of y is equal to the length of h plus length of x minus one value. So you can use that as a check on your work.